the Fed had the ability and the resolve to extinguish this inflation fire. And it was going to do it. No matter what it took, it was going to bring inflation to an end. And the markets believe the Fed. Now, the market shouldn't believe the Fed because the Fed has gotten everything wrong in the past, especially when it comes to inflation. But for some reason, the markets believe the Fed. And as a result, priced assets for an environment in which we have high interest rates and no inflation. That is what investors expect. They think inflation is going to disappear and interest rates are going to be higher. And that has caused investors to pile into the US dollar. That's caused them to sell uh, gold and silver and buy US treasuries. If you look at the yield on 30 year US treasuries, it's only about 3%. And on a five or a 10 year, it's lower than that, maybe 2728. Given that inflation is 9%, although we got, we got data today, now the year over year inflation rate has come down to eight and a half percent. But when you have eight and a half percent inflation and 3% 30 year bond yields, that shows that investors are confident that the inflation we're seeing today is going to go away. And so therefore they don't need to be compensated for inflation over the next 30 years because inflation is going to go away because the Fed has pl promised to get rid of it. But the problem is inflation is not going to go away. Inflation is here to stay. The inflation that we're experiencing today is not simply the consequence of reckless monetary policy since the COVID uh, pandemic. Now, the COVID pandemic add fuel to the fire, and I was very critical of this policy mistake when the Fed first made it back in March of 2020. I was one of the few people that accurately forecast that the pandemic was inflationary, not deflationary, because the pandemic was resulting in a reduction in supply. The proper monetary policy response would have been to reduce uh, money supply so that prices would stay stable. But instead, the Fed did the opposite. It expanded money supply, therefore increasing demand as the markets were reducing supply. Now, a lot of the supply reduction was due to government mandates that force businesses to close and workers to stay home. So the government ordered a reduction in supply at the same time the Federal Reserve delivered a huge increase in demand. In fact, people who used to be on the job making stuff were now at home collecting unemployment benefits that exceeded what they used to earn. So they weren't producing, but they were consuming or at least trying to consume. And so this was a perfect storm for massive inflation. And I warned about that. But all this inflation has its roots in the 2008 financial crisis and the government bailouts, QE1, QE2, QE3, all of that was inflation. The Fed let loose all of these inflation chickens back then. Investors were worried that all this quantitative easing would cause a lot of inflation. And they were correct. In fact, quantitative easing is inflation. It's just inflation by another name. And inflation ultimately causes prices to rise. But temporarily, what happened was a lot of that inflation went into financial assets, went into stocks, bonds, real estate, stuff like that. Now it's migrated into consumer goods and it is there to stay. The only problem is that there was a long lag between all the inflation that was created and the impact on consumer prices. Well, now we've arrived at that impact. There's so much inflation in the pipeline that nothing the Fed is doing now is going to uh, turn off that spigot.